Hey guys, I've got two games to share with you. They're both pretty fun, pretty exciting, but they've got a common theme, which is that there is always hope. Okay, when all hope is lost, there can still be light. Okay, so these are literally the last two games I've played. And uh, the first one is in the Vienna Gambit. Um, my opponent here is rated 1336, and I play F4, the Vienna Gambit. And he declines the gambit and we go into the Halloween line now. This is almost always a huge advantage for white. So you capture the pawn on e5. If the knight recaptures, it's bad news because now d4 and uh, knight's in a world of pain. I mean, if he comes back here, you push and attack this pawn pretty much wherever he goes. So here, he's moved the knight onto a square g4. Now, I haven't analysed this game where it is attacked by the queen but defended by the knight, okay? And this brings up an obvious idea of pushing e5, okay? Now my opponent does really well actually to get out of this. Um, so they play uh, queen to e7, and I know this. You know, this is quite common in the, the regular Vienna Gambit. And so the next move is queen to e2 to break the pin on the pawn, so the pawn is now free to capture the knight, and if the knight falls, maybe the queen might fall, or so, uh, the knight might fall. So he attacks the pawn, I grab the knight, and now we have an exchange of queens. So he is down a knight uh, for a pawn, basically, and the queens have come off the board. Okay, so now I go down and pin, uh, well, I don't pin the knight, attack the knight, bishop there, knight develops, bishop attacks knight, and now I castle. So I had options of castling either side, I decide let's castle quite aggressively on the king side. Um, I'm up a piece for a pawn, and now it's just a case of uh, attrition. I just want to break my opponent down and try not to make any mistakes. Okay, so now uh, a6 attacks the knight. I can't go in there because I'll just get trapped. If the king goes to b8, I don't have any squares to go to, so the knight retreats, but I've slightly weakened the pawn there. And now... Uh, pawn to h6, kicks my bishop, bishop retreats. Pawn to g5, now he's starting some action down the uh, king's side. Now I retreat this knight. Um, so my idea, I think, is to bring the knight to f2, try and dislodge this bishop. Uh, he brings his knight in, attacking my bishop. I go, go for it. Trading material is all good for me. He declines that. I kick the knight, he comes in again, forking rook and bishop. I attack the knight again, now he finally takes the bishop, I recapture with the knight, and um, I'm feeling fairly confident, my, my king looks pretty secure there in the corner despite having no f pawn. now he pushes f5, so this is the kind of play I, I like and the kind of play I admire, he's being uh, aggressive, now I capture the bishop and he recaptures with the pawn, now I guess what I should do here is just do something to stop the progress of these pawns, right? Anyway, so my knight's under attack, retreat that. Pawn to g3, he's really going for it now. So I put my bishop into g4. Now if he wants to capture, I can either dodge to h1 or I can recapture with a king. Uh, so that comes with check, he's just moved his king out of the way and now I'm trying a blockade, right? But now h5. Now I move my bishop out of the way. Now g4. Okay, and we are starting to get some real pressure uh, supported by this rook on the h file. So I, I decide to create some counterplay down the queen side. He takes, I take back with the bishop. And I'm thinking here that we've solved the issue, right? Bishop's defending the pawn, the pawn's defending the bishop. This pawn can advance only so far and we're going to have a, a deadlock situation. Bishop attacks the knight, pinning the knight as well. Knight moves, knight attacks the bishop, check. Rook to f8, that's okay. I push my pawn forwards, he pushes his pawn forwards. Right, now, I grab the knight. Maybe this was an error in retrospect. Uh, now he attacks the knight with a rook, I attack the bishop, he moves in, I lift my rook to d3, and now rook to g3. Okay, now, this is a good place to kind of evaluate the situation. Um, so I'm thinking I'm pretty secure here, right? My, my bishop is defended. My bishop's 
and my king are defending my pawn, I can't see any way he can break through. So, you know, it's just down to me now to break through on the queen side, right? But no, look at this. Rook takes bishop. Okay, I'm in check. The king has no squares to move to. <clears throat> There's only one legal move. I have to recapture. Then g2, defended by the rook. Four king, king and rook with check. There's only one legal move. Queen goes there and I simply resign the game. Okay, seven minutes left on the clock and he's completely done me in. Right, he's attacking my rook here. He's got basically an extra queen and an exchange. Oh no, extra queen. So the game is, is, is going to be over like on the next move. Queen g1, simple checkmate. Uh, very, very good play. But this is, this is very important. This is where you have to stop. I've got eight minutes on the clock here, right? Um, interesting to see where I, where I went wrong. But I think the, uh, the computer said, and I did check it afterwards, um, I needed to basically protect better with my knight, essentially. Um, I guess even here, yeah, I, I made a, a, a wrong move with the knight, but the detail doesn't, doesn't matter too much, but very, very good attack. And it just goes to show, you know, my opponent's down material, right? He's down, he's down a piece for a pawn, still at this point. But yet, he goes, well, what are my advantages? Well, you know, the imbalance is in his favour. He has a pawn majority on the king's side, okay? His king's relatively safe over there. I actually never, never really troubled his king. Uses his pawn majority to excellent effect. I move out of the way, he presses on, okay? He captures, I recapture it. It all seems pretty, pretty normal. Um, so I think here, yeah, I think rather than moving one of the... I shouldn't have been pushing my pawns too much. I think kind of need to cover that square with the knight at, at, at kind of at this point. Something like that was, was what the computer wants me to do. Um, but yeah, great. Just, just really, really awesome play. And to see this rook sacrifice. So putting a rook on the g-file, first of all, here, was uh, very clever. Putting it behind his only remaining pawn there. But this, to, to be able to calculate that, was just fantastic, you know. Even at this point, I could have simply captured the pawn with my knight, um, and I'd have been okay there, you know, just give back the material. But I, I, I got arrogant, I got lazy, I thought I was okay, but this was just a fantastic move. So I've saved that into my library in, uh, you know, awesome checkmates. Uh, or even though we didn't actually get a checkmate, what an attack. Really, really interesting. Okay, so let's go on to the next game. <clears throat> so this one, uh, my opponent's rated 1407, and uh, I have the black pieces. And we have the French defense. Now I actually make an error here in the opening. There's a line that doesn't come across very often. So knight f3, d5, perfectly normal. And now knight to c3. Now you don't see this very often, and the reason is because black can simply play d4. In general, when there's a central pawn that can move forward, you don't want to stick your knight in its path if the pawn can be pushed uh, while being defended. And here it is defended by my queen, so knight can't capture. So this guy is going to have to move. So now the knight moves to b5. Now the correct move here is that the best move is c5. Okay, because I've got two knights now attacking this pawn, right? I can't push e5 because it's undefended on that square, right? So I need to defend this pawn somehow. I could have brought out my bishop. That's an option. Um, c5 was best, but here I played my knight out. And now pawn attacks. And so now there's three attackers on that pawn, okay? So I try and hit the knight. Now knight takes the pawn. So he's got, and this is just a, a simple, I mean, basic tactics, really. He's got three attackers on this pawn, okay? And I don't have a pawn defending it. I only have a knight and a queen defending it. So I kick the knight. He goes, well, that doesn't bother me at all. I can capture with my knight. 
And if I recapture, which I do, he recaptures with, with his knight, and he's still got all his pawns, I've lost my d-pawn. I have no d-pawn. So that's one to remember. So I've updated my notes on that. Now e5, kick the knight away, knight retreats, bishop to d6 to defend the pawn, d4, excellent move, pin the knight, break the pin, knight f6, takes. Now this is, this is interesting, right? So now I take the knight, he takes the bishop, I take the pawn back. He doesn't swap queens, but instead castles, right? But he's still that pawn in front. Now I move my queen to e7. So I've got ideas of putting my rook here and try and take, uh, occupy the open file. He brings out his bishop. I hit the queen. Queen moves down to a5 with check, which isn't too bad because I have c6. Uh, b5 wasn't really playable because it undefends the a6 pawn. Okay. Now the rook comes across to the open file, contesting. So I simply castle, right? Because here, if I'd have taken, he recaptures, and now he has the open file, all right? But with castling, now if he initiates the rook trade, I have the open file. So good one to remember that one, okay? Now he looks to be wanting to double up rooks. I play queen to c7. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm eyeing up h2. That would come with check. So there's no danger of a bishop trap. Uh, the king would have to move and I'd simply retreat the bishop back, right? So he spots this, pushes g3. Now rook to a7, so I'm defending this pawn, uh, so that I can push b5. So I'm, now I'm starting to look at maybe trapping the queen, right? My bishop's guarding this square. If I push b5, it's covering that one and that one. And then maybe I'd have a5 covering this one, pushing the queen back here. So there could be ideas there, right? So now um, white decides to give up the bishop pair and trade his dark squared bishop for my knight, which was uh, okay for me. I was quite happy to see that. So now he doubles up his rooks, but this is fine because look at the firepower I've got defending d8, right? Four pieces, no less. All of my pieces are defending that square. So now what I meant to do here is actually to push b6 straight away, um, but I kind of mouse slipped and uh, pushed, uh, sorry, push b5 straight away, push b6 instead. He attacks my queen, drop the queen back. Now he attacks my bishop, so I counter-attack his queen. Queen moves across to the center, I attack again with c5. Queen drops down, kind of looking at this rook, but the rook is very well defended. Um, but now, I have to notice my bishop is still under attack. So I drop my bishop back down to d8. All right, it's defended three times, it's attacked three times, that's fine. Okay, so if he wants to capture, I recapture, and I, I win the exchange, basically. So now, e6, again, aggressive pawn pushes, right? This is a good time to be pushing pawns. When you've got a pawn that's that advanced, use it. Maybe even better, get a rook behind it and then push it. So I capture. Queen recaptures uh, with check, king h8. Bishop takes rook, because that was here. Uh, so here, actually, he had the option of capturing the rook. Queen recaptures, bishop recaptures, free rook, really. But he missed that. Uh, but now he gets the rook, I recapture with the queen. So now I'm down an exchange and a pawn. Okay, but remember the theme. There is hope. Queen to here. Bishop f6, defending this pawn. So this is key. I've got two defenders now. Right, that pawn is likely to become a target. Queen up now, proposing a trade of queens. And I notice that I need to defend this pawn, I need to defend this pawn, so queen to c8 defends both. Now he pushes g4. So maybe he's worrying about um, his king getting trapped behind his pawns, or maybe he just wants to uh, disrupt my bishop. So I put my bishop here now, now I've got two attackers on the f2 pawn. So something must be done. Nothing is done. The queen moves across to e5. So I go in with the bishop, with check, right? Uh, rook takes was an option, but um, if I take the rook, he's got rook d8 check. 
and I have to capture with a queen, so it's not an option really at all. It would have, in fact, led to checkmate. So bishop takes the check, king moves into the corner, queen moves into the corner on a8 with check, and there's only one way to, uh, to get out of this, which is that one of the rooks is going to have to come to this square here to block the check. King can't move. Uh, queen could also have blocked as well, I suppose. So he plays um, rook eight, uh, rook one to d5. Now I slide my rook across because I notice he's got two pieces looking at this pawn that was defended only by the king, so have to defend that pawn again. And now queen takes. And this is completely a miscalculation on my opponent's part. Okay, So you can see what he's thinking. He's thinking... I have to take that, and he comes here with a fork, right? But it, that's not how it works. I take the queen, fork, yes, queen takes, rook takes, rook back. And I'm up a, up a bishop. Right, so he's basically he's given up his other rook. Um, now rook comes up. This pawn is actually protected by my bishop, so we're not too worried. I grab the pawn on g4. He pushes a pawn. I just drop the rook back, now defending this pawn. Very easy to get a bit too relaxed about your pawn protection when you're up material at the end of a game. Also notice there's no checkmate because now the king can come here. Um, the king goes there anyway. I now start to improve my king. B4 takes takes. Bishop comes back to attack the pawn. Pawn defends, which I expected. And now uh, rook to g3 is now attacking that other pawn. He comes back attacking my pawn, but here's a pattern that you need to know for your end games, right? My rook takes his pawn and defends my pawn in the process. So he's down to 1 minute 25. It's not going to last long. Capture a pawn, attack the rook. Now what I, I really want to do is try and persuade his king to step onto this diagonal here, where I can jump in with a bishop fork, but it doesn't happen. King comes this way, and now here... Clearly, he misses the threat, right? He's got a minute 18 on the clock. What's the threat? He pushes a pawn, obviously, discovered check, and because his rook is on a dark square, I can attack the rook, win the rook, okay? And now we end up in a, a very basic ending. So these pawns on the, on the uh, queen side I can forget about, because now Harry the H pawn is has a free ride all the way to promotion and now it's a, simply it's a case of a standard checkmate so it's a ladder mate basically uh, couldn't be simpler and there you go so yeah a game where I made a mistake in the opening um, ended up going down material lost my rook down the exchange and yet you know whenever people are get their nose in front <clears throat> start to get a bit of a lead in the game we can all do it, we can all get complacent. So don't give up. Um, in the last game, I got complacent. I thought it was mine to win and I forgot to defend and I forgot to calculate. Um, I think something similar happened in this game, really, quite honestly. So there you go. Hope this has been useful. Hope you picked up one or two things and I'll see you soon.